Hello, everybody. A little impromptu quick chat with Stephanie and myself today. We were not planning on filming this. We actually, poor Stephanie's not feeling that great. We know that fevers are a good thing because they're burning up old, old, old stuff for new stuff to come in. So if you guys are experiencing any fevers right now, like Stephanie is, it's a good thing. You're burning up the old in order to bring in the new. Um, that's what we're taught in yoga, at least. Um, it's, it, it's necessary. It's a necessary necessary to change is to burn up the old so stephanie you look beautiful though even though you don't feel good so listen i just quickly put eyeliner on and my lipstick and my mascara and you look good this is this is how i look right now so i do apologize my hair is up on my head i didn't do anything today so i felt i woke beautiful. up feeling like crap and then suddenly i'm like oh my god i have a fever so and it's it happens i majority of my time in india i think i had a fever because it's just it just it, it sucks but it's just you're burning away the old in order to bring in the new so it's a beautiful 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 celebrated thing but you look beautiful i know when you have fevers you don't feel like it's a crappy feeling to be burning up like that but you look gorgeous so guys oh, i know you. that um so we decided to jump on last minute because we were just chit chatting um on zoom about upcoming episodes and i had told stephanie that i put a notice on my community tab about questions involving tarot cards and i know that this has upset some people but this is a boundary that we are going to be implementing on this channel because we are on the side of good we are on the side of light and this is the boundary of asking about other people so we will not be answering questions or stephanie and taylor will not be answering questions anymore regarding other people this can be um your husband your sibling, your friend, or a celebrity, or a politician. If we don't have that person's consent, then we will not channel them. Um, I I know that in the past we have done that before, uh, but through the experience that I've gone through these last few months, I now really, really understand the dangers in doing that. Okay. Um, I, for months now, I've been channeled without my consent. And for months now, two people specifically have been looking over my Akashic records and my natal chart for nefarious purposes without my consent. Consent is number one. It is key. It is key to everything in a world that is ruled by free will. Okay. And so it is because of the shit show that I've been through regarding this, I have now you, you learn when you when you know better you do better and so i will not we will not be doing that on this channel because i i mean if you put yourself in somebody else's position or in your own shoes if somebody were to ask a question about you either publicly or privately without your consent how would that make you feel it's not a good feeling and so moving forward, we're going to course correct and we're not going to be doing that anymore. So we'll, we'll still draw on like events, right? Stephanie, like big events we can draw on. Um, your well, I can also, so sorry to cut you off, Bryce. Um, so what I often tell people who I read for um, in personal reads, if they have a question about somebody in their family, like their well being or something like that. Um, I can't channel their higher self and ask their higher self how it connects with them only. I don't channel the person. I channel their higher self. So the wording can be changed. Like, for instance, just an example, um, if like, let's just say I were to go for a reading and I wanted to know if my son is going to do well in school. That I would make sure that that tarot reader is then asking my higher self how so Stephanie, how is your son going to do in school? That's a little different because it's channeling that person's higher self. In and relation that's the way, to the person. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. I'm not going to snoop into somebody's higher self without their permission ever. Um, I can only channel that person asking and how it relates to them, how it affects them. Um, but that's the only way I do it. And that's my rule when I do personal readings. Um, and especially of the last two weeks, anybody who has had a reading with me, if they ask me about a loved one or something, that's my rule. Um, just because I'm not going to go into personal details, but, you know, getting personal stuff from somebody I don't even know that's not at that. That's that's an invasion of privacy. Huge invasion of privacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the divine puts boundaries up on all of us and we have to respect those boundaries. 
And yeah, so it's like, if, if you, if you come and say like, oh, there's this boy I like, how does he feel about me? We can't ask that because that's, that's tapping into his personal thoughts. And he hasn't given us permission to do that. And it doesn't matter if we're talking about, again, about a celebrity that none of us know, they're still human beings, right? And I was just chatting with Catherine Edwards off camera and we, I brought up the case of like Paul Walker, who is a celebrity here in the United States that many people think might not be um, gone, but we don't know for sure. And here's the thing, guys, he has a daughter. He has a daughter. So how would you feel if somebody, some terror reader, reader was pulling cards on your dad that you think is deceased and saying, oh no, he's not really gone. Like, how would you feel as a child? We have to practice empathy. We have to practice compassion. And that is why we're putting a boundary with this. And I know most people totally understand that we've got a lot of really positive response, responses regarding this, but we don't have the right to invade on somebody else's boundary. With that being said, other tarot card readers who do this, that's their choice to do this, but it's still, it's still invading on somebody else's privacy and it's doing something without their consent. And we always have to have consent always. And mm -hmm. so, um, and so we're, that is why we're going to really be forceful with this about like not tapping into other people again, because I know most of you guys listen, listening would not want that done to you, right? You are not what your children have to see that your dirty laundry aired all over a YouTube channel, right? So we have to have that kind of compassion. We know that the good guys in this um, WAR are not arresting people because of tarot cards and pendulum boards. They're arresting people because of hard, cold evidence, law and order, right? Solid stuff, not because of divination. So div the divination that we're going to be using with you guys should specifically be to help you, to help you grow, to help, help you heal, to help you understand if you're on the right track. Because at the end of the day, you are the only person that you can really control and take care of. And so I really hope that that makes sense. Again, I will acknowledge that we have done this in the past, looked into other people, but that was before we actually realized the gravity of what that means. And now that we've realized it, now that I have experienced that invasion of privacy, um, I know better. And now we're going to do better. That's human growth and evolution, right? And, um, and I want to say out there again, uh, you know, I've now closed myself off from being channeled. There are only five women in this world who have the per my consent, my permission to channel me at any time they want to. One of them is Stephanie. Um, and that they're friends of mine. So I know that they're never going to channel me for nefarious purposes. And it's always going to be done for my highest good. There is one male that has my consent to channel me at any time. And that's my twin. And that's because we're twins. And so if he needs my energy, he can use it. All right. So, and you can't really cut that off between, well, you can try to cut that off between twins, but you can't really. So it's not a good, so, thing, to do. Yeah, not a good thing to do. So, um, so those are the six people in this whole universe right now that have my permission to, and my consent to channel me. Other than that, my Akashic records, my natal chart, all that's been sealed. So, um, other people who think they're channeling me, probably channeling yourself at that point, because uh, that's what happens. So it's like, if universe doesn't want you to, okay, just for instance, if your intentions are for gossip, they're not pure intentions. Guess what? Universe is going to give you a lopsided answer. Going to give you an answer that, you know, it's probably not accurate. So just keep that in mind when you're using pendulums or what cards. It doesn't matter what kind of divination tool um, that you're using. Um, your intentions have to be pure in order to get a correct answer. The ego needs to be left out. If your ego, if you're using your pendulum and your ego is fully in, um, you know, when you're you're not, you didn't have your ego death, and you know what I mean. It, sorry, I'm talking like today because I'm not feeling well, but um, you're going to get answers that are probably a little off and probably more directed toward yourself. Um, for the record, too, I'm completely closed except for my twin um, or except for a couple of women, including Bryce. Um, so anyways, yeah. Yeah. And that's and, and I will say, too, so there and when I started. So when we, when I started coming to the realization that it was not okay, like not spiritually okay to read tarot on people that didn't consent, that's when I started studying a lot of different other tarot readers. And I realized at that point that there are a lot of tarot readers out there 
that have that disclaimer where they'll tell you from the get go, I will not read on anybody else. That's not you because they don't have. And I realized that this is actually really a thing. And with that being said, I started to realize too, that there are a lot of people who have sealed themselves off. This is actually a big thing, especially in the spiritual yeah. community. I've met multiple people, people who've said, oh yeah, I sealed myself off a lot, long time ago. So with that being said, kind of the joke's kind of on you. If you go to channel someone that you don't have their permission to channel them, and they've actually sealed themselves off, then you're not getting a reading on them anyway. Most of the time you're getting a reading on yourself. So let's use Bill Gates as an example. Like we know that, we know things about him. It's pretty obvious without, with evidence of what's been going on. But let's say that he cut himself off from being channeled and you decided to pull tarot cards on him without his permission. Those tarot cards are actually gonna be reflecting you. So food for thought, right? We yeah. don't know. And I'm sure a lot of these bad guys probably have sealed themselves from channeling. I would guess, wouldn't you, Stephanie? Because they know all about this. Yeah. Stuff. Sorry, I'm just looking out my window. There's somebody like driving by really, really slow in some creepy black car. I'm like, what is going on? Now they're gone. Okay. Good. 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 <laughs> I'm uh, like, I get a little weirded out about that kind of stuff. So I'm like, okay, what's going on? Um, yeah, totally. 100% agree with you, Bryce, on that. And we need to be very, very cautious on how we use divination tools. And um, with great power comes great responsibility. So you really have to be very, very um, aware of your intentions. You have to put your intentions out there to the universe before you do any kind of reading. So um, you want to always um, make sure your divination tools are clean. Um, and then, you know, the thing is too, I know I get a lot of comments or I'm sure you get a lot of comments, Bryce, on how, how do I do this? How do I do this? It's just a quick look up. You, yeah. you know, your way might be a different way than my way. You know, everyone has different ways of doing things. And, you know, um, I'm not teaching things for a reason. It's just too much on me at the moment. So um, it's, it's just an easy, quick Google search yeah and teaching things too on a live platform like that can be turned around and used uh by people yeah. who are not good and so there yeah. is um it's funny i was i uh was watching one card reader who all of a sudden was getting into some like murky territory with a karmic energy and she just stopped reading because she said i can't i don't want to go deeper into this because i don't want to give the person watching if, if this karmic is watching this i don't want to get the give them any information that's going to allow them to continue to hurt other people in the situation that that it, it is in so you have to be careful about what you put online as well like i know we were going to do an episode about how to use the pendulum board but we decided not to because that could be used for nefarious purposes and so yeah i would suggest like you can you can do a quick search a quick research on how to do it but you can also find a healer uh like our friend mary who we had on the episode the other day i have a, a lot of friends who are healers um you can contact them and they can help you as well because most of the time healers know how to do that so, um, so I would suggest doing that as well. Contact somebody privately who can help you seal yourself or talk you through it. Cause you're the one that has to, to seal it, not somebody else. So, um, so yeah, I hope that makes sense guys. I don't want us to sound like we're coming off hard on anybody because literally I, I know that this is, is, is weird for some people because we've seen people do this for a while now, look, look into other people, but you know, just as of late, we, we want to, again, when we learn better, we do better. You know, if, if something happens and you don't learn from it and you continue down the same toxic path, then it's going to keep coming up. And, and we've decided to course correct with this because we are in the light. I, we want, I don't want to hurt anybody. Stephanie doesn't want to hurt anybody. After I went through, I feel terrible about the fact that we were pulling cards on other people. Even if they are celebrities, I feel terrible about that now because of what happened to me. And now I understand like, and so we're not going to be doing this to anybody else. I don't care if they're a good guy or a bad guy. I don't, I don't care. Whereas we're not going to do that to other, other people. You had like a fairy or an orb. Go for I know I've had a fairy, even with Catherine, I had fairies. I think it's Mary Magdalene. <laughs> she around me a lot. So, uh, so, so yes, she wants to be called Maggie. She wants to be called Maggie. She tells me that. So anyway, but, um, but anyway, so I hope, I hope that makes sense guys. Uh, Taylor, I think Taylor's going to be back with us this week. Right. Um, yes. so I'm going to say this guys, uh, if you have now, since we've really established this new rule, um, do you have any questions for Stephanie and Taylor for later on this week when we film, ask your questions down in the comment section below. 
so that I have them. And if we miss, guys, if we've missed a question, if I've missed a question, because I'm the one looking at them, it's not intentional. I promise you, it's not intentional. We get so many questions flooding in, and we're trying to get to as many as possible. And so if we accidentally miss you, and you really want your question answered, just keep re-asking it. And then hopefully, um, eventually, I'll see it. it. It's literally not intentional. It's just that we're missing I just miss it when I'm going through the list of questions. So if I could go through all the questions, I would. I just can't. No, one, we one for like five hours. Reading. Yeah, we'd be here. We'd be sitting here for a long, long time. I remember when I first found Taylor, she had a live and it went on four hours of her doing a live reading. And I'm like, that girl has some serious like, like yeah. she's a yeah, superhero yeah. right there. <laughs> I'm going to say too, like, it's not, it's not the, it's not the, it's not even necessarily the energy of doing it. It's just the fact that like I'm working off of one laptop. And so since I do this full time now, I'll have like, right now I have an episode processing on my um, editor while I'm filming with Stephanie. Once I end this, I have to download it off zoom, put it to the processor to get it up. So it's just, it's, it's literally like we wouldn't be able to get videos out if we went longer than an hour, an hour and a half, because it would just take too long to get it up on the up on YouTube. There's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes on with running a channel. I'm glad you brought that up because I've gotten a couple comments that I'm going to be flat out honest. They pissed me off. So I've had a couple comments where, um, oh, you're not posting enough videos. Well, I'm going to put this out there for everyone. Okay. My baby right now is not YouTube. My baby right now is my groups because I'm connecting people. I want people to take that very, like people need to understand that I was posting a lot of videos when I first came on board and then I was being led. Yeah. I still have the platform and I post my videos with you, Bryce, or I post my videos. Like last week I did a video with Shanti and I do get them up late because I have so many things going on and there's also stuff behind the scenes. I don't tell anybody about Bryce knows she knows I'm going through some personal stuff right now. I'm also a mom of a teenager. So it's like, um, and I hope it's okay for me to kind of voice my opinion on this. So I need people to understand I'm not going to be posting videos like Bryce does, you know, or like um, as many as Catherine does, because that right now is not my priority. My priority is connecting people and I'm going to be um, I'm getting better at answering the emails and everything like that. So um, that's my main priority at this moment. Yeah. And so I, I just, I need people to respect that. Um, I, um, I don't even care at this point if I'm even monetized on YouTube or not, because this is just, this is just an extra platform for me to kind of like, um, share with the audience on, you know, my groups or my, you can get a reading from me and just other stuff that I'm doing behind the scenes and everything. Um, just so I'm forming a community that that's the main purpose behind it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm going to continue my videos. Absolutely. But it's, it's just not my 100% biggest priority right now. Yeah. And it, and for me, YouTube is my main job. Now it, it turned into my main job. So that's why you get daily videos from me. Um, but yeah, Stephanie, you've got all these groups and you're also doing tons of tarot card readings uh, for people. And I'll put Stephanie's website down in the description box below again, guys, in case you want a personalized reading for her from her. Um, so you can book that through her, uh, through her website. Um, on another note, speaking of behind the scenes, I am at this point, looking at getting somebody to help me with the administrative work behind the scenes, as far as my emails, um, getting all my videos processed and edited, because it does become a lot. Most of my day I spend editing, uh, to give you guys just an example, when I do the Mary Magdalene videos for Tuesdays, it usually takes me about six hours to edit that one video. Um, so I am looking at getting somebody to assist me with that. I have been in talks with like a management company to help me with that as well. Uh, cause my channel is getting bigger, even though I'm super, super shadow banned right now. So thank you guys for sharing the videos. If you've been sharing them, cause I am shadow banned, but, um, I am trying to, uh, figure out how to go about the next step because I know I'm missing emails, all that kind of stuff. I get so many emails a day, guys, that if I do miss your email, it's nothing personal. I just missed it. Um, and so that is going to be a next step in my, in my company, in my channel, Esoteric Atlanta is actually having, um, not being a one woman show anymore where I'm literally doing everything all by myself, but actually having a management company and something behind me to help me, um, with the administration work so that I can focus on 
researching because I, I love that's what I love to do. I love to research. And I, I literally have been so swamped that I haven't had the time to continue the New Orleans series because I'm so backed up with all the editing and everything else like that. So there are good things happening behind the scenes. Um, and I'm so I'm so grateful. I'm eternally grateful to the universe for actually giving little old me a platform because if you had asked me five years ago if i would be on youtube i would have laughed at you so uh, <laughs> so i thank you guys all and you guys are all fantastic and i know you guys totally understand where we're coming from because we're all human beings and we're all just figuring it out as we go so i appreciate each and every one of you and i i know stephanie appreciates you guys as well and we appreciate your support and your love you're all our friends and family on this journey we're all just walking each other home right we just can't look on each other's backyards. We just have to keep our own business to ourselves. So anyway, guys, Rachel, did you, did you want to quickly bring up, um, did you want me to briefly talk about Ascension symptoms too, since a lot of people are going through it before we wrap it up? Or do you want to save that for another time? Let's or? save that for another time. I think okay. I want to revisit also, I did a video a while ago on yoga fever. And so I want to talk about that again, because um, I just did a video with Catherine. And I think that people are, are also, um, we, yeah, well, let's, let's, let's look on a bigger video for okay. that because you have to burn up the old before the new can come in. And I think a lot of people, when they get fevers, they immediately go to take medicine to stop the fever. And that should not be happening um, because you need to let the fever burn out what it needs to burn out because you can't bring it. I'm in letting it burn out. You can't bring you see it in my face. I'm letting it burn. Yeah. Out. <laughs> you cannot let the new come shit. in unless you get out. The old. It's like, if you have a, a drawer in your house, that's like packed full of stuff right? But you, you go shopping, and you buy all new clothes, but you can't get the new clothes in there until you take the old clothes out. And so for a lot of people, the fevers, that's the, because that's what a fever is. It's burning. It's fire. It's the also detoxing too. And yeah. all these light codes are coming in, but I, you know, I, I shared on my community wall as few, actually they were recommended by you, a lot of the, the health force uh, stuff. And then uh, anyways, but yeah, and I, and thanks to Bryce, everyone. I just, I push myself and I'm now working out. She's like my distance personal trainer at this point. <laughs> I suck at yoga, but we'll get there one day. Um, <laughs> you can only suck at yoga if you're an asshole. Everything else is just a practice. So you don't suck. We at all yoga. have one. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. So yeah, I know Stephanie's been working really hard guys. And that's why, I mean, if you look at the old, old spiritual practices, like the older ones, they all come with a form of exercise because the body is the temple. Even though the body is property in nature and it's not the soul, it holds a lot of information. And so it needs to be worked and used. My body is getting rid of just, no, I, I, no, I mean it in a spiritual sense. I don't mean it. Okay. I would never say that on a YouTube video. I'm not talking about physical stuff. Okay. My body, well, Bryce, you know, my, my entire life is just like, if my life were a matrix all on its own, it's a shattering. So a lot of old is being, you know, purged out and, you know, my body is now trying to welcome in the news. So here I am feeling like total crap. And, um, yeah, I, I could beautiful. probably go in an ice bath right now and feel great. Ice baths are amazing. I used to do cryotherapy, guys, before, you know, the world shut down. Ice baths, cryotherapy, those are amazing, amazing tools to use, the cold therapy. I still take cold showers in the morning. So um, it's in the summertime. It helps to get the blood flow going and it helps um, with inflammation and all that kind of stuff. So cryotherapy, man, that that's a trip too. You kind of get, um, you're in this like, freezing tank for three minutes you're butt ass naked and um man it's a it's a trip it's it's i used to do it like two or three times a week for years i did that two or three times a week um and it changes you it absolutely it's it's a miserable three minutes but it literally it literally changes you there's a famous guru that used to laugh and say like everybody always asks me what's the path to enlightenment and i tell them five minute cold shower and then no one does it <laughs> It's not exactly comfortable, but apparently getting to enlightenment is not the most comfortable no. yeah. pathway. That, yeah, that's something that the West is just totally dumb on. Um, and I blame I blame the powers that be for this. Yeah, change is not comfortable. Um, change if you want to if you want to find 
enlightenment, if you want to grow and in, in yourself spiritually, you have to get uncomfortable. There has to be mm -hmm. a controlled demolition. Like there, it has to be painful. Um, my original teacher, David Grieg, asked Guruji once, uh, he told us this in a conference, he asked Guruji once, Guruji, why is this practice so painful? Because the Ashtanga practice, real yoga is very painful and very hard. And uh, Guruji said, because pain is real. Pain is real. You know, if, if you're thinking that ascending or going to a yoga class or any type of spiritual practice is going to be blissful, then you're on the wrong planet. It's not. It's not blissful at all. You have to unpack your ego. You have to go through an ego death. You have to break yourself before, um, before you can actually come to a place of, of understanding. And, and that is something the West is really, it's really hard for Westerners to, to do that because our, we've been trained. And I say we've been trained. We've been trained to think that if you're uncomfortable, that's wrong. No, if you're uncomfortable. Then you're doing something. Well, right. it goes. It goes to the analogy of a butterfly. I mean, a butterfly has to go through a lot of different weird, funky stages. You know, a, a caterpillar is not, I mean, some of them are pretty looking, I guess. I don't know. They kind of look weird. But then it goes into this cocoon and you talk about cocooning a lot. And then, you know, and the cocoon kind of looks ugly and, and then it blossoms into this beautiful butterfly. But there's a lot of changing that's happening. And I'm sure it gets kind of uncomfortable in that cocoon um, after a while for that butterfly. And then they, they want to come out of it. So, but, um, you know, it's if you want to enlighten yourself or you want to better yourself, you're going to have to go through a lot of discomfort. That's just, a lot of tears. that's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah, a lot of sweat, blood, and tears. I mean, that was years for me in India. It was just sweat, literal blood, and tears. Mm -hmm. um, and you got to rid yourself of programming, too. And I, I don't care what kind of programming it is. Um, one of the biggest programs that I had to break was the church programming. And we can do a totally different video on that one day. But I didn't have anybody deprogramming. I did it all on my own. I had to because I knew what I needed to do. Um, I, I would say probably the pain that the church caused me from a lot of gaslighting and a lot of verbal abuse that I took from the church probably had a lot to do with being able to like run away with, with that. But um, it, it's, you got to break down the programs. You got to, you got to restructure your mind. You got to reprogram your mind and you just got to go into this new world. You just have to do it. Yeah. And it's not going to be fun at all. It's not. Um, and yeah. So we could, we could do that. We could do, let's, let's plan. I think that's important to do because there's a lot of people that I'm noticing. There's still a lot of truthers out in the community that are all about, you know, just, um, the, the practice, the, the mindset on certain things are still so devoted to the Bible when the Bible was so manipulated. And let me tell you, I just want to say this a year ago, actually, I'm sorry, even six months ago, I would have told you the Bible was 100% accurate. That's how I was programmed. Yeah. And then it wasn't until I, I read it with 2020 vision that I'm and and I've, I've gone to God about it. I've gone to God about it. And God just, what did he do? Bryce? God laughed at us. Yeah. The story of Jesus is the story mm -hmm. of Mithra. The Bible yeah. is the story of Mithra. A Mithra it's Yash and there's Yahshua. Yeah. There's Yahshua the Christ. And there's also Magdalene the Christ. They're both twin yeah. flames. And I said Jesus because like, they, they, changed, they changed the name. His name was yeah. not Jesus. It means Hail so. Zeus. Yeah. And the whole blood of Jesus thing, that is satanic. The whole eating the body of Christ is satanic. That's a Mithraite. That's Mithraism. And so it was funny because the last couple times I had to take communion at church, God told me not to very, very loudly. Do Don't not. Do it. This yeah. is a satanic ritual. You need to stop. And well, it's I a stopped human sacrifice, crying. right? Yeah, I, I'm sure I, I really think Jesus or Yahshua was M-U-R-D-E-R. I can't spell my head right now. Sorry. But um, you know, I, I don't want to say that word on your, your video here and get, uh, you know, a strike on your channel, but, um, I, I think he was, you know, by the, by the powers that be, that we talk about, you know, something about rid off the earth plane and everything like that. Yep. But, um, for totally different reason than what we're told the whole entire, um, church thing is a narrative, just like MSM has their narratives and everything. So I just want to make that clear. And let me, I was that person. I would have fought you tooth and nail. I would have argued with you that, no, the Bible is 100% accurate. And I would have actually gotten angry about it. 
I was that person once upon a time. I was very programmed. Yeah. But it put chains on me, put chains and shackles on me. And I had to break that programming. And now that I did it, it's not that I'm, I'm not dabbling in anything that's going to put me in hell or anything. I just want to make that clear too. It's I had to let go of the programming in order to become the best that I can be. And I, now I'm actually sitting here and I'm helping people. And you know what? I feel great about it. I, I love myself because I can help people now. The church would never let me help anybody. Yeah. The church said I was a nobody. I was not going to rapture. I'm going to hell, all this other stuff. And you know what? F that. Yeah. Yeah. F that. And, and you see, when you read the missing books of the Bible, especially the gospel of Mary Magdalene, who again, Yahshua wasn't the only Christ. Mm -mm. He was also the Christ. They were divine feminine, and divine they were, they were very, very uh, mystical healers. They did Reiki. They did, you know, all the, all the major good prophets. They did divination, you know. So don't let the church lie to you about that kind of stuff. It's a narrative to put you in fear. And as long as you're in fear, you're going to stay in the 3D. You got it. And if there's love, there is no fear. So if yeah. there's fear in your church, there is no God because God is love. Exactly. And the God I serve loves all of us. Yeah. So we can go Thank into a deeper much. video of that in the program of the church along with. Yeah. Sorry. I went on a side tangent no, with fine. that. And you're I fine. just wanted you're to bring fine. that up really quick. Yeah. No, you're fine. And we'll, we'll also incorporate like what it means to actually have a spiritual practice is not just going and sitting in church one hour on Sunday. They, they, they took, they dumbed it down. You know, it's it's a lot of physical involvement to purify yourself, all that kind of stuff. So we can go do a whole video. God all day. Oh, I do too. Yeah. 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 All day. Like literally, I, okay, I'm home usually a lot now because of, you know, what what's going on in the in the world. So it's, I, and, and now my ears are open to God's voice even more so that I know when I'm hearing from God now and I don't need any pastor, any priest or anybody telling me, are you sure? No, I'm freaking sure. I'm sure. That was Joshua and Mary's teaching. That was the Gnostic. Oh, that's, that's the other voice in my head too, is Joshua constantly, constantly. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't not, if it were not for Joshua, I would not be sitting here talking to you, Bryce. I would not have a platform. I wouldn't have the groups. Um, also, Gabriel to Archangel Gabriel is a huge um, voice that I also get messages from because he's the messenger angel. Um, so, I mean, I would not be here if I did not have faith in God. And if I was doing such horrific things with my divination, I don't think that I would I would be here either. You know, does that make sense? Like, yeah. This is a blessing. This is an absolute blessing to be able to do this and um, collaborate with you and help other people and connecting groups. Again, guys, you can also, I don't know if you want to put my email for the well, groups down below as well. Um, people are connecting left and right. I don't even care what religion you're from. I don't care what your background is. If you need to connect with people to talk to people that are like-minded, if you're kind of feeling lonely in this whole WAR you know, email me. It might take me a, a week or so to get back to you, but I will. Yeah. So one big family. All right, guys. So that's just kind of an impromptu uh, update on our tier readings. And of course, we'll, we'll, we'll work on a bigger video talking about the breakdown of the church and what it means to really take on a true spiritual practice, all that kind of good stuff, guys. So I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. Um, I will not be on David Dublik this week because he is out of town. I think you will be back on Thursday though, right? Mm -hmm. And I will be back next Tuesday on Zublix. And I think Sean Stone is going to join us on that episode with David Zublik. So that'll be fun. So I will put, as always, I always have the links to the Dark Outpost down in the description box below. So if you're not a part of that platform, please go over and join us there. There's no censorship over there. So we get to talk about whatever we want to talk about. It's fantastic. So anyway, guys, I hope you all are having a fantastic day. And we will talk to you soon. Bye.